Hi, I'm Holly Pike. If you'd like a trial of the Generations software that I use for digitizing, please visit TryGenerations.com. This video is a recording of a live video I did for my previous students. You may hear references to You Can Digitize or YCD. That's my old website that is now closed. My new website is digitizingschool.com. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. Insert artwork. I either double click on the artwork or single click and click OK. Then the image processing box comes up and this is where we get our choices between simple artwork for auto digitizing or a scanned image. It says scanned image because it's a JPEG. And I'm sure that Karen and, and Maria have gone over this with you. If it's a JPEG, it will always say scanned image, but that's okay. You don't have to use scanned image. Photograph is for a photograph and I don't do a lot of that because it just, to be very honest, it, it doesn't work great. So I don't use it, but we're going to choose image as template. Leave your resize after inserting checked. Otherwise, you cannot resize the artwork once you get it in and look at it and say, hmm, okay, I'm not really loving that size. You're going to have to do the whole import, you know, insert process again. So leave that guy checked and I'm going to click OK. Now we get our resize box and this size is fine with me for purposes of, of training and click OK. And now our artwork appears on the screen. Now, because we have the eight resize boxes around it. You can see those eight boxes. We can hold our shift key and press the plus key. And it makes the image darker. So those of you that like your image really dark when you work, you can do that. I don't like it that dark. Um, interesting. But we're going to leave it that dark. OK. <laughs> um, I don't generally like it that dark because I like to be able to see what I'm doing on top of the artwork and I can always turn things off and, and look at them if I need to. So, but we're gonna leave it alone. Now this artwork presents um, some interesting things. You will have some jump stitches. You'll have jump stitches on, um, let's see, you'll have jump stitches from here to here and then to here, because those are not attached. And those are probably going to be satins or um, possibly, um, uh, can't think of the word right now. It'll be a motif, probably. So you will have some jump stitches. You may possibly have some jump stitches in other places that you can't hide travel stitches. So we're just going to work through this a little bit and see what we get. You can always hide travel stitches under here, under here, here, all around here. You can hide travel stitches because they're thicker lines and you can tuck them underneath. We'll use satin for those and you can hide travel stitches here. So there are ways to get around this from having a whole ton of um, jump stitches and we're going to do the best that we can with that tonight. Any questions? Lorraine wants to know if this set is available, Holly. If so, um, can she have it? Golly, Lorraine, I don't know, but let me write it down. And I will check. I thought someone might like it. This is Butterfly Dreams. And I don't know who the artwork source is. Oh, yes, I do. Embroidering colors. Okay. Um, I will look. Lorraine. Lorraine is on my team. That's why she can ask that. So if there's anybody new here and you're hearing people ask for artwork, I don't give out artwork. I don't loan artwork. I don't sell it. I don't do that. I have licenses for everything that I use. And Lorraine is on my digitizing team. So my team can ask for artwork and use it under my business name. So let's just be really clear about that. Okay, I will look, Lorraine, and let you know. Okay, so here we are. Any other questions? No, that was the only one for now. Okay, good. You're beautiful. All right, well, let's think about this. 
I'm thinking that I want to be able to travel. Let's click outside to get rid of those boxes. I want to be able to travel underneath these guys. So these heavier things need to come in a little bit later, as in last or close to last, so that we can hide things underneath them. And the density is going to have to stay fairly, fairly heavy, fairly normal, in order to accomplish what we want to accomplish with hiding jump stitches. If you don't want to hide jump stitches, and you don't mind jump stitches, you could do some really cool things with this heavier uh, red stuff. You could do partially filled red work. You could do uh, fluid contour. You could do um, radial. You could do, maybe not radial, but you could do arc. You could do all kinds of cool things with it. But for now, and for the purposes of this lesson, we're going to try and hide the jump stitches as much as we possibly can and connect things up as much as we possibly can so that it stitches nicely. We may not finish, and that's okay. We'll get enough done so that you get the idea. Okay, with that, I'm going to go ahead and go up to 400, because I always work at 400. And I'm going to start down here, because it seems like a logical place to start and to be able to travel and move things around down here. So let's do that kind of looking here again to see what I've got. And we may change our mind on things. Now, because the artwork is red, I'm going to work in a different color because I want to be able to see on top of my red to make sure that I'm getting everything the way I like it. So let's use this color. It doesn't really matter. You can always change it to red later or to whatever you would like later. I'm going to select my line tool this is my um, freehand line tool. And notice this box comes up where it says, yes, it's a line. At this point, I can um, change the triple to, to anything here in this list. And I can change the color from this point if I'd like. So if you'd like to choose your tool first and then make your changes over here, you can do that. Now, this is something called pre-close. Let me show you what this does. I'm going to turn this on. And this really had me puzzled for a while. If I want to make, you see this, like a rubber band, it's going to follow around. And then if I get here and I hit enter, it's going to close that for me. For me, that's horribly confusing and very distracting for me to have that extra rubber bandy thing stretching around. So when I choose my tool, I make sure that my default is always to pre-close off. That way I'm dealing with one line, one line only, and I don't have those additional issues. So let's come down here. I've got my tool and start right here. And with our right clicks, you don't have to use a lot. I've seen in some things that have come to me that people tend to do this to get it like a really, 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 really perfect um, curve. You don't need to do that with our software. As long as you get the curve and it follows the line, you see how that Bezier curve just kind of works its way around. And you'll learn how far to go to keep that curve looking really nice and pretty. Later on, you can put more points in if you need to um, to make it look the way you want it to look. I'm going to come right up here. And I'm going to double click. Now I'm going to turn on my 3D view. Because I want to see that line in all its glory, in all its thickness. But now we have to change our stitch, our line tool, because we only want the, the travel stitch to be a single run. So now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to say, make the next one. Let me go back. We're going to drop our tool, go here, and then say, now give me a run. I'm going to go from here to there. You can do this all in the film strip if you want. You can make them all triple, then go back and change them. But I want to impress upon you that travel stitches should be triple, single runs unless you absolutely have to have something else. Now I'm going to touch that line, and then with my triple, Come back around. Let 
and end here. But let's go out and take a look at this. If I end here, how do I get back to here to not have a jump stitch? Well, that's a great question. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the out, maybe. I'm going to grab the out and bring it up here to where the in is and generate. And what that does is when it stitches, it's going to stitch that first one and come up here, travel to here, and do a single run, underlay, and then come back with the triple to here. Now I can just right click and drop my tool, pick up my line tool, change it to a run, and come to right there. Escape, drop, come back. Now it's a triple run and I'll pick up right here. So now we have no jump stitches in this little area. But you're probably going to say, but Holly, you need to merge these. Well, no, you do not want to merge them because if you merge them, this line and this line, which is a travel, is going to become a triple run. Or the triple runs will become a single run depending on which one you choose first. So you, you don't want to do that. So now I'm looking at this and I'm saying, hmm, I probably should have thought of this a little differently, but we're just going to keep going. We're just going to keep going, going ahead. I'll choose my line tool again, and I'm going to change it to a single run. I'm going to start right here, and I'm just going to travel my way to there in a single run. Escape. Choose my line tool again. Now it's a triple. And now I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to just squeeze right past that. Squeeze right past that. Just a little bit of thought, and, you know, you can make some really cool things happen. I'm going to escape and take a look at this and now we've got a little problem because if I end right here, if I end there, I'm going to have a jump. So I'm going to grab this guy, put it there, generate my stitches, go back to 400. This seems to be the biggest question that people have is how do I put travel stitches in? I don't want to let it travel in some things, but I don't know how to put them in. So that's why this, I'm doing this. Okay, now we have our line tool. You can also change it down here. You can also say, give me a run right there. Make sure your other line is not selected. Okay, and now I'm going to start right here and go to there. But that's a triple run, isn't it? So let's change it to a run. Escape. Pick up my line and do this. But we have the same problem here. I'm going to grab my out and put it right there. So as you can see, this is going to stitch when we run it through the stitch simulator. It's going to stitch with no jumps. And these travels are going to be hidden. So now we have this issue here. What do we do next? I'm thinking we just keep working around. So I'm going to travel here, put the line in, travel here, put the line in. And I'm just going to travel my way around this until I get to here. Okay. Now, Maria and Karen might do it differently. And Lorraine might do it differently. And Nancy might do it differently again. And Diane and John and everybody, if I didn't say your name, I'm sorry. They all might do it differently. This is how I'm doing it. I'm just teaching you the technique of putting your travel stitches in, in some type of a logical manner. You know, they might start over here and do this first, or they might do this first and then have a jump somewhere. Whatever works. Whatever works. Okay, so where are we? We are... I'll select the last thing I did so I can find out where my out is. I'll grab my line tool, make it a run, and now I will travel to there. So 
to triple run now and I'm going to travel to this takes a long time to do this this is kind of like um, freestanding lace you know it's 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 a it takes a long time now I could put them all in like I said before or I can do this to make sure that I get them right now if I was going to put them all in let me show you how I would do it what I would do if I was going to put them all in is I would put all of my verticals in put my travel in make sure they're separate because they're going to be different stitch properties it's a triple it's going to be a single triple single triple single triple single triple single triple single triple now I have to go out and go through my film strip and find the ones that are the singles I'll hold my shift key down there's one maybe I'll hold my control key if it'll let me isn't that fun Isn't that fun? That doesn't work. Okay, that's not one. How fun is that? Okay. Um, okay, we'll do it the hard way. If my keyboard's not going to cooperate, we'll do it the hard way. I'm going to right click on that one, holding my control key. I'm going to select everything that is a travel stitch. You know it's a travel stitch because it's not one of these. Okay, all of these are the travel stitches. So now, it says they're a run. Okay, let's look at the other ones. And they're triple runs. That's very interesting. Huh. Hey, y'all, my, my team, did you see that? I put all triple runs in, and now they're single runs. It's very interesting. Okay. So this one's, that one's a run. So let's select that one and this one. Now make sure that they're all triple runs for the verticals. Otherwise they're not going to look very good. This is the harder way to do it. I would do it in the film strip, but the film strip doesn't seem to want to work for me tonight. And that's the webinar software that, that does that. Now I'm going to choose triple run. But they are all in the right place. So now I don't have to go and change ins and outs. I shouldn't have to. Everything should be working the way we want it to work. Okay. That's, I think, a hard way to do it. But if that's what you want to do, that's you know you're you're welcome to do that. I think it's easier just to change my tool, and um, you know move along happily and keep my concentration. I'm gonna travel up to here, escape, drop your tool. Now we're a triple run.
same issue here we want to be able to take this and move it there now we need to travel up to here so we'll take this and actually I'm going to take my out and put it right there travel from my out to there make that a run let's see where we are okay we have to move that again I like to go down a little bit so you all can see what I'm doing I'm going to take this out maybe and put it right there Okay, let's go back. It can get very, very complicated if you're not thinking through it. Okay, now, notice how I touched that right on top of that. So I'm right on top of this. Notice how I'm touching right on, just like red work. This now behaves just like red work because these pieces were going to merge because they're all the same stitch these here they're all the same stitch so if I take this one and that one and that one and that one they're all triple runs so now I go to view outline icon, view outline icon right click and merge now they're one piece comes in here does all this comes out here so now I'm set up to come over here and do this. Okay. All right. Do you all want to see the travel stitches on this side as well? Or can I move on to the rest of the design? Because we won't complete the whole thing. Um, Nana asks, what about the center of the wing? And Elaine and Tammy say, go ahead and move on. This part of the wing here, Nana, we're, that's going to be just a separate piece on its own. So let's do that so you can see how that works. Okay. There's our design. So I'm going to do all of the light, lightweight lines first. Okay. So I'm going to take my triple one. You can see it's triple run here. And once I actually do it, you'll see it's a triple run. Come all the way down. I'm going to treat this just like red work. Now, it's not going to be a problem having this line down the center of that satin. It's going to give it a little bit of um, underlay. Okay, so that's I'm going to do that. Now, these are all triple runs, right? They're all triple runs, so I'm going to select them all. View outline icon, right click, and merge. This this whole wing here is going to be it's going to be separate from the rest of it. So yes, you will have jump stitches. Okay, so now let's go down. We're out here. I'm going to move this to there, just for efficiency purposes. Take my line, change it to a run. Go right there. Take my line, now it's a triple run, and I'm going to go here. I'm going to do that same thing again. Change it to a run. See how that works? We're just going to keep doing it. Change it to a run. Okay. It's all there. All the parts and pieces are there with, tra with travel stitches, so you won't have any jumps in this lighter work. Now let's go back and put the rest of it in. 
Now I want to look at this and figure out how I want this to look when I get done. Do what do I want this to look like? This should be your your question in your brain. What do I want this to look like when it's done? Do I want this to be hidden underneath this? Do I want this to be hidden underneath this? Or do I want it to just come all the way across? Do I just want it to do this? And then have everything else kind of stem out of that? Or do I want to use this whole outline To hide all the edges such decisions lots of decisions I think I want to hide all the edges that's what I want to do so that I think that's what we're gonna do okay so now I'll take my area tool hang on where'd we end we ended up here okay so let's do this first I'm gonna take my my satin tool Okay, that's pretty thick. Let's do it again. You have to remember with satin that it gets thick, really thick fast. So you want to kind of underestimate how wide you want that satin to be. Don't like that either. Okay, let's try a line and turn it into a border. So I'm just going to put a line across here. Like that. I'll hit escape. Now down here, I'm going to turn it into a satin border, but it's really, 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 really thick. Okay, so now I'll go into my, my space bar. And let's see if we can change that line. The width of that line is six. No, the width of the line is three. So let's see if we can change it to like a 1.0. And that looks better. What's the smallest we can make it? Hmm. I don't know. What's the smallest we can make it? I think it's like 0 0.06 is the smallest we can go. How about 0.6? Better. I kind of like that better. That will work for me. Um, let me turn my phone off from jabbering at me here. Okay, perfect. Okay, so that'll be good. Now let's put in our, we should travel down to that. And that's going to be a single run. Now let's grab our other tool. Want to make sure to cover the edges of your um, travel stitches. Okay. Not thrilled with the stitch angle, but I think I'm going to go ahead and change that to an arc. Let's see if I can get it to do that. Okay, so now we have some decisions. Do we do a satin around this, which will look very heavy and clunky on this, or do we just do a multiple run of triple run? Hmm. Tough decision. Hmm. Or do we make this smaller? So that the satin will fit around it perfectly, maybe, and look okay. Let's give that a try. Make sure you cover the edges of anything that's loose and hanging. Left clicks up here, you kind of get a mess. Now this is going to be pretty wide because I'm staying outside the artwork. So. But you'll get the idea.
okay? That's what you're going to end up with. If you want to, you can change the density on the satin a little bit. It won't affect seeing those travel stitches because it's the same color. And that will just lighten up the intensity of that, um, that satin. But you can also do this design where, oops, <laughs> you could do all of these light lines in like a light blue and then do all of the heavy lines in a dark blue. That adds for a more complicated design, but you certainly can do it and still hide your travel stitches. Not a big deal to do that. Any questions? Lorena says, okay, for that center piece, I do a triple run to the circle, then do the circle, then the triple, then the next triple run, so I don't have any stitches to cut. Does that cause yeah. a problem in the design? I, I, are you talking right here, Lorena, right here? If you're talking right here, what I did was I did triple runs all here. Here, let me draw it. I did triple runs like that. And then I merged. Okay? Because I can deal with these little balls later. You're going to have some jump stitches. There will be no way to get, remember when we first started, you're going to have jump stitch from here to here, from here to here, to here, to here. You're going to have some jump stitches. Don't freak out about that. If they're necessary, they are what they are. It's when they're not necessary and everything's jumping all over kingdom come and there's no rhyme or reason for what you're doing and the, the person stitching it out says, wow, this person has no clue. That's when jump stitches are an issue. They're not an issue if they're necessary. And I know Maria and, Maria and Karen have told you that because that's what I taught them. But you try to avoid them. So let's do, let's do those little ball things, these little guys. I could just do a satin. I could take my circle tool and I could make a circle, hit escape, come down here and say make it a satin, change my ins and outs, and, and do that, and I have a satin, and it's fine. It's fine. It may not be horribly interesting, but it's fine, okay? That's interesting. Okay. Or I could take my satin tool and make a manual satin. Left click, left click, right, right right, right, left, left. It comes out a little different. You have to be really, really careful when doing it. Um, and that takes practice. Okay. Or I could go up to stitch, accessories, sorry, go up to accessories, to motif, and open the motifs. Some of you may not know that you could do this. You open the motifs and now you can select one little tiny motif to use in your design. And if I'm going to have jump stitches, I want them to go, oh, there's jump stitches, but ooh, that's so pretty. Okay, so the prettiness and the coolness of it makes them say, I don't mind cutting a jump stitch or two. It's so pretty. So I'm going to take the French knot and double click on it. I have to go out and find it. There it is. Here's my French knot. I'm going to put it right there. So the French knot's going to look kind of cool there. And now I'm going to make it a little bigger because it's cool. Remember, we want it to look cool. So it can be a little bigger. You're just going to say yes to that. Okay, now you're going to copy and paste. Copy and paste. And then when you have this other one over here, you're going to copy and paste. So that's what your little wing is going to look like. It's not going to be just a boring satin. It's going to be something cool because when they see that, they're going to go, oh, 
that's so pretty. I don't mind cutting the jump stitch. Give them a reason and they won't have a problem. Any questions? Uh, a couple of them. Uh, let's see. First one was from Fran. Uh, she says, how do you think it would look on those short stitches to use a run on the side and go over and then back to the same side and then run again along the edge? The over stitches would be two runs, but much easier. Okay, let me think about this. So like over here you're talking, Fran, I think I know what you're talking about. And yes, you could do that. You could take your single run. I think this is what you're talking about. If I'm wrong, just tell me. No, this is not what you're talking about. Okay, what am I missing? Read that to me again. Please. Okay, it says, how do you think it would look on those short stitches to use a run on the side and go over and then back to the same side and then along the edge again? The over stitches would be two runs, but much easier. Well, then how do you connect up the short, the short triple runs to the single run so that there are no jump stitches? While we're waiting for Fran to answer. Yeah, I'm obviously missing something, but I'm yeah. I'm willing to listen. And while we're waiting for her to answer, um, how about this one from Jane? She says, why wouldn't you just use a satin border and make it smaller? Here? That's what we did. Well, that's what I did here, not here. Satin borders do not always work with a dramatic point or a dramatic uh, shape that makes makes interesting points. Satin border doesn't always work. Let me show you. How about that? Picture's worth like a gazillion words. Take orange. I'm just putting a line in. Okay. Oops, didn't change colors. Okay, so here's our line. Put over here where we can see it and it's not there. Okay, here's our line. Now I'm going to come down here. I'm going to say, make this a satin border. Oh, this one's going to work just fine. It figures. And then make that line 0.6. So this one worked pretty well. But a lot of times you will find that the satin border does not work. Here's the other thing. If you want to do anything like to make this even cooler, watch this. Use feathered edge. A side is the inside, B side is the outside. Let's just change a couple stitches here. Change a couple settings. How about that? Changes the whole look of the design. Makes it cool. Oh, it's so pretty. We don't care about jump stitches. You cannot do that with this. When you go into spaces, look what's missing, the feathered edge. I am not a big fan of the satin border, but sometimes it has a place. And sometimes I like to use it, but it's not my go-to choice because I like to be able to play after I do the design and say, oh, wouldn't this be fun? Let's go back in there and see, you know, what else we could do. Maybe we could make this a two and make this a three and let's see how that looks. Oh, I like that even better. Now we can change our density and make it a little spiky to change the look. You cannot do that with this. Okay, understand the difference? Learning to do satins is well worth your time. Okay, let's see here. Fran says, uh, back to Fran's thing. <laughs> she says, there is no triple, only use the run throughout. 
along the edge to A over to A over and back run on the edge over and back. Only a single run. I think Maybe. she means to get from the edge well, yeah, over yeah. and back. So you got now you got a double run in the middle. Sure, but how do you get to these then and not have jump stitches? If you do a single run up here and down here, how do you get into those? Are you making them all single runs? Are you doing this? I only have it to 200 so we can see it. With a single run, is this what we're doing? Right back on top of that single run. This this to me is dangerous. Because you'll never in a million years get those single runs lined up. You'll never get them lined up. I mean, you're welcome to do that. Um, I don't see how they're going to get lined up. And if you look at this closely, you'll see that they are not lined up. And you will see that when it stitches. If that's what you're thinking, you're welcome to do that if you want to fuss with it. Um, as for me, I'm, yeah, I'm not interested in doing anything quite that fussy. But, you know, you might be. Am I still off target? I'm looking here. Hang on a second. Oh, by the way, Jane said, thank you. That makes sense. Okay, good. And Tammy says, how do you feel about, we'll get back to this one in a minute, I think. Here's Fran. Fran says, stay on the same side and do it over and back. So you go up the side, over back, up the side, a little further, over and back. Up the side, over this way. I, boy, I don't, I, I'm just not following that. Um, why, don't, why don't we? Why don't you talk with Fran about yeah. that? I know, Fran, I know, Fran. You have a thought in your mind, and it probably will work. But for some reason, it's not connecting with my brain. Okay, let's, Fran. If you and Holly can talk later on, um, or during the coming week or two, but, that I, would be great. but I trust that you probably do have a way because you probably do have a way. <laughs> but that's how I would do it. Hi, I'm Larry. I hope you enjoyed this video. It was recorded during a live webinar that Holly taught some of her students for digitizing. At this point, she's finished the lesson that she had planned to teach, and for the next 20 or 30 minutes, probably, she'll go on and answer random questions from her students during the live webinar. I'm going to cut those off and I'm going to take those and turn them into little video shorts to put here on our YouTube channel later. But for now, you've got this lesson and if you enjoyed it, learned something, please give it a thumbs up. That helps our rankings with YouTube. Um, also, if you'd like a copy of the software that Holly's using so that you can digitize along with her, we can get you a 30-day trial that's fully functional if you just go to www.trygenerations.com www.trygenerations.com and we'll give you all the details there. Thanks for watching.